while ago, the great popularizer of mathematics and magician, Martin Gardner, turned 64 years old. And he celebrated by baking himself a cake and then thinking, I'm going to invite over 64 people for my 64th birthday. So he split his cake into 64, had the 64 people knock on his door, and suddenly realized, much to his chagrin, that he had forgotten himself. So he needed a 65th piece of birthday cake. How was he going to get it? Well, being a math magician helps. So what he did is he cut his cake like this, and these broad swaths, and then he figured out that he could take it and reorganize it into a different shape, like this. So it starts out as an 8 by 8 cake, and it ends up as a 5 by 13 cake. Now there's 64 people at his birthday party, plus one himself is 65, and thankfully he's managed to solve the problem. But that's only because he's Martin Gardner. Or is it? Why don't you try to do the same thing? Is there anything wrong with this? Doesn't look like it. All of the pieces are the same shape. So that's your first exercise, is to figure out, is there something wrong with this? or is this the secret proof that we've all been looking for that 64 is equal to 65 and that you can keep on eating that cake as long as you want? Okay, so let's first of all think, is this the only way that uh, this magic trick works? Well, it's not. We can also look at the magic trick with a larger square and rectangle. And here it is, 13 times 13, and 8 by 21. Do you notice anything funny with these numbers? 8, 13, 21, and for the previous square it was 5, 8, and 13. Do you notice anything funny with these numbers? Well, you should. The last square was 8, 13, and 21. Those were the digits used. It was a 13 by 13 square. And the first one that we saw Martin work with was an 8 by 8 square. I want you to go away and create the same fun mathematical problem but I want you to do it with a 5 by 5 square, and I want you to split it up then into 3 by 8. So just to refresh your memory, you're going to be starting off with cake cuts that look like this, or look like this, but are on a smaller, a smaller cake, a 5 by 5 cake, rearranged into a 3 by 8 cake. So stop it now, stop this video now, and do that. The magic certainly didn't last through the baking of the 5 by 5 cake because whenever you do that, the triangles that you get in the 3 by 8 rectangle look pretty unhealthy. And if you keep on going and bake a 3 by 3 cake, that would be the next smallest cake on the Fibonacci sequence, then things really start to fall apart rather seriously. And those triangles are, look distinctly more trapezoidal. Another way that you can see the problem is to calculate the slopes. So there are the slopes of the triangle at the top, the hypotenuse is a slope of minus 5 thirteenths, but the quote-unquote triangle at the bottom, um, this quadrilateral, it, it, it ends up with slopes of minus 3 eighths and minus 2 fifths. So the, the hypotenuse isn't a hypotenuse at all because it's not one line, it's two different lines. Did you notice something? Did you notice which was larger, the square or the rectangle? Starting with the biggest cake, the square is bigger, the rectangle is bigger, the square is bigger, 
the rectangle is bigger. So it seems like they alternate back and forth. So does that alternating pattern continue for uh, larger numbers of the Fibonacci sequence? And can we also do this mathematical trick using different numbers? So let's look at for example, the Lucas sequence. The Lucas sequence begins with 2 comma 1 and you add those two up to give 3 and you add 1 plus 3 that would give 4. So that's the Lucas sequence. Can you create the same mathematical trick using the Lucas sequence? Indeed you can and here's the proof of it. Here's an 11 by 11 cake and Hey presto, we've got a 7 by 18 cake. We can invite five new friends or five grandparents or the in-laws plus the wife. And oh my goodness, we've got flexibility here. So this is a great, <laughs> great possibility to extend your circle of friends by baking cakes and rearranging them. A while ago, I asked you whether the Fibonacci sequence alternates back and forth between the square being bigger and the rectangle being bigger. But we might as well generalize it. It's not any more work. So let's generalize it and ask the question whether any Fibonacci integer sequence has this property of it oscillating back and forth. So try to solve that and then come back. Okay, so to try to solve it we'll start off with any Fibonacci integer sequence and we're going to uh, look at these first three terms. We're going to expand it. That is the rectangle a times a plus b and the square b squared. And we're going to expand it again. And then we're going to look for the next biggest square. That's a plus b. So we're going to do the same thing there. That is the rectangle b times a plus 2b minus the square a plus b squared. Going to expand it and simplify. And simplify again. And you notice that these two results are the same magnitude but the opposite sign. So indeed, they do flip back and forth, but this quantity stays the same. So if you bake a cake um, with the Lucas sequence, and you rearrange it away from the square towards the rectangle, you're either going to be five people short or five people too many. The last question I'm going to leave you with is how many extra pieces of cake can you get from reshuffling one of these cakes from the square to the rectangle? Can you get two extra people? Can you get three extra people? four, five, six. Well, we already saw for the Lucas sequence you could get five, and we saw for the Fibonacci sequence you could get one, but all of the other questions that I've asked we don't really know yet. I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to leave it with you, and I'm going to go and bake some cakes, make some friends, and enjoy doing some mathematical magic.